I built a half billion dollar enterprise in my 30s. But if we had to do it again and go from broke to millionaire business owners in the next 12 months, this is what we do. And if at any point during the video you think to yourself, I can't do this, you might not be cut out to build an empire and become a millionaire. But if you're part of the select few that are willing to put in the work, then this video is for you. Well, why are we able to talk about this? We've built a $65 million a year Amazon business that's projected to do 75 million this year. And we're standing in it right now. So if we could help you avoid all of the challenges that we face, then all of the mistakes that we made would be well worth it because we can help you skip all of the bad shit and get straight to the good stuff, scaling your business. So first off, let's talk about things we'd avoid. If you pop into YouTube, you'll see thousands of videos of people going into retail stores, buying a couple units for a few dollars each and selling them on Amazon for a profit. Or you'll see people going to garage sales and flipping stuff on eBay, like my man Gary V doing trash talk, but that also will not make you a millionaire. So retail arbitrage, garage sale flipping, all of that works in the short term if you're looking to make a few dollars. But if you really want to build something that can scale, if you want to build something that's going to last time, what you're going to need to do is build something of value. See, the thing with retail arbitrage, it's that shiny object syndrome right in front of you, that instant gratification because you're able to flip it and see a few dollars come in. But the problem is every moment of your day has to be spent flipping, otherwise money isn't coming in. It's a return on time that we're looking for. It's a return on time that a legitimate business with systems will give you. So if I were to start all over again, I would start in retail arbitrage, but I would work my way up to $5,000 and exit as soon as possible and place my first wholesale order with legitimate suppliers and begin to scale that operation as quick as I can. So let's run a little bit of math. If you're currently doing arbitrage, look at how much time you're spending sourcing these products. And I guarantee when you analyze that amount of time versus the money you make, you're not making as much money as you're expecting. And the thing with $5,000 in wholesale, you could place an order within 20 minutes and have profitable products coming in in the next few days. And it's a large scale flipping. Instead of making $5 on five items, I'm able to make $2 or $3, but on hundreds of items. So if you only have a few dollars, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage is fine, but please, 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 please do not stay there. This is what we would do. Make a couple thousand dollars doing the arbitrage shuffle, going into retail stores and shopping online websites, or even doing garage sale flipping. That's all cool to make the initial money. But then we would look for suppliers to open wholesale accounts with and purchase inventory at larger volumes because that's our bread and butter. And the thing that happens at that larger scale, it's gonna force you to now build infrastructure, to build systems, because you're gonna be in a place where you have so many products coming in, you can't handle it yourself. So you're gonna be forced to start building a business of value. So if I had $5,000 and I was starting over and getting into the wholesale game, I would go speak to the store managers and I would get the point of contacts at corporate and find out who I need to speak to about purchasing the same products I'm currently purchasing, but in volume. And while he's out here establishing relationships with potential new suppliers, I'd be looking for additional funding so we can purchase these larger quantities. I'd be opening up new credit cards, requesting credit limit increases on my current credit cards, contacting the bank that I've been banking with, looking for lending opportunities, as well as searching on Google for lenders that can provide me additional money to fund my business. Another option is leveraging your family. Everybody has that creepy aunt or uncle that has boatloads of cash and nobody quite knows where they got it from, but they have the money and you just need to have a conversation with them asking if they will invest in your business and you can pay them an interest for their investment in your company. And once we have the supplier relationship and we have the cash coming in, we're ready to set up our infrastructure. So this is our 50,000 square foot warehouse, but imagine this was like a BJ's or a Costco or a Sam's Club or a Target or a Walmart or some sort of retail store. It's a very simple process to find these potential products to sell on Amazon. You would simply walk around that retail store and locate some products that you could pick up and see who manufactures them. So over here, check this out. We're gonna pick up a product and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this so there's no confusion on your end and you can start doing this immediately today. So right here we have some products on this palette and we got OxyClean. So on the back of every single product, it says who it's manufactured by or who it's distributed by and sometimes you'll even have both the manufacturer and the distributor. So in this case, the manufacturer is Church and Dwight, which is one of the largest manufacturers in the world. You can contact Church and Dwight and see who their distributors are in your area so you can open accounts with those distributors and get access to inventory like this to sell on Amazon.
Anyway, sorry. If Church and Dwight, for some reason, told you, unfortunately, they don't have any distributors they're aware of or they just didn't want to work with you, you could go ahead and search it online and find distributors that carry these everyday products. If we were starting all over, we would be prepping the products ourselves. And I don't know if you remember this, but early on, it was so exciting just seeing us prepping the products. I mean, every day I'd wake up and I couldn't wait to get to the warehouse to prep inventory. It's invigorating, it's exciting, you're watching the business grow, but also, it's a hustle. It's a lot of work. It's a time investment, just like retail arbitrage is a time investment. And so if we were starting this all over again, we would implement systems as soon as possible. Because these systems will change the game for you. In the beginning, you're doing all of the work, but you have to because you need to understand how each process operates or else you'll never be able to train any employees to do it for you. But once you're able to train the employees to help out in the day to day, it allows you to focus on growing the company while the employees are operating the company. It starts simple. Like early on, first thing you're gonna do is teach them the things that you were just doing. How to poly bag products, how to label them, how to print those labels, how to properly box them. All the details that you are handling, you're going to train them and move on to more suppliers and closing more deals. So by this time, we would probably be doing around $30,000 a month with that initial $5,000 investment that we flipped month after month after month. So now we are a few months into this process and a majority of our time is spent prepping these products, which is very time consuming. So at that part in our business, we decide to hire employees to help with the prepping of the inventory so we could focus on what Sebastian talked about a few minutes ago, finding more suppliers and getting access to more inventory so we can continue to grow. And the beauty with this process is once you nail it down, you can easily scale to $100,000 a month. But if I was starting all over again, what I would do sooner is spend more time on supplier relationships because it's those suppliers that have relationships directly with brands and I would be working really hard night and day to build brand exclusivities so I could be sending out more pallets like this of all brand exclusive products which are making us hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit per month. So here's what a brand exclusive relationship is. It's when you partner directly with a brand to be one of a few sellers authorized to sell on their listing, or even better, the only seller that's authorized to sell on their listing. Now, brand exclusives are a whole new level of Amazon business growth. It's not for novice or new sellers. We would need to build out the infrastructure of our business, preferably in the beginning with a hybrid model. Initially, it's going to be an arbitrage wholesale hybrid model, and then when you begin to scale the wholesale to hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially millions of dollars in business, you can then start onboarding brand direct relationships because you understand the systems, what these brands need, and most importantly, how to provide them value to help them grow. So when we were doing retail arbitrage, we'd be looking for about 50% ROI. Then you scale to wholesale, and at this point, we're looking for about a 30% ROI. That is just a minimum. But here's the thing. I can't put percentages in my pocket. I can only put dollars in my pocket. And so it's all about how much profit dollar is coming in month over month. So the magic about wholesale is you get access to a lot more inventory and a lot more quantities of the inventory you're selling. So instead of arbitrage, where we're selling five of this and 10 of this and five of this and 10 of this, in wholesale, we can sell hundreds, if not thousands of the same unit consistently over and over and over again. So we could take that 30% ROI, turn it into profit dollars, and put it in our bank accounts. And then the benefits of brand partnerships or brand exclusivities is now we have these cemented relationships where we're able to forecast month over month. And what happens with one brand exclusive is it's a domino effect. If you handle it right and you provide them with value, they're gonna speak to their friends who are brand owners and you're gonna be able to have multiple brand relationships early on, right from the start, because now you know how to do it if you were starting from zero today. So this is the expected trajectory of how we build this business. The first 30 to 90 days, we'd establish an arbitrage hustle so we could build up capital to get that $5,000 to start reaching out to wholesalers and opening accounts. At three months to nine months, the main focus would be scaling out the wholesale side of the business to make sure we're selling tens of thousands of dollars a month on Amazon and we understand the infrastructure of how it operates. 
months. Nine months and beyond, our focus would then be establishing relationships with brands to get a few brand exclusivities under our belt. At this point, our business is what we would consider a hybrid business model, where a majority of our sales and profit are coming from wholesale, and then a portion of it is coming from brand direct relationships. What we wouldn't do is just cut off something that's already working. Just because retail arbitrage is not scalable doesn't mean we cut it off the day we open our first wholesale account. What we're gonna instead do is slowly migrate. The first couple weeks, it might be 80-20 retail arbitrage wholesale. After that, we'll move and pivot to a more 50-50 relationship, and then slowly but surely, we'll get to 100% wholesale. And when it comes to our brand relationships versus our wholesale and that hybrid model, we'll do the same thing. 80-20 with 80% being wholesale, 20% being brand exclusives and brand relationships, and then slowly continue to pivot until we have a nice, healthy blend. If you want all the resources, documents, tools, and software that we use to scale this business, click the links below and they are all available to you for absolutely free. We went super tactical with you, but let's get into some more of the real stuff, what's gonna have to happen. The fact of the matter is tactics and systems, they're so important, but they don't matter if you don't have the right mindset. The business is only as strong as its leader. So if you are the entrepreneur, if you are the operator, the owner of that business, it's all gonna come down to your mindset. I know if I had to start this over again, if Eric had to start this over again, we would succeed because we understand it takes persistence, consistence, it takes perseverance, it takes the ability to know that even when shit hits the fan, we just have to pivot. When there's a challenge in front of us, we just got to jump over. You don't stop no matter what. The same pattern, the same routine I've seen over and over again from those who succeed. There's only one thing that they all do the same. They don't quit. You need to be willing to face challenges. You need to have that long-term mindset and you need to be okay with failure. Also, we had to ask for help. We did not have all the answers. It's so important for us to find someone with more experience than us in the current business that we're operating to communicate with them and ask questions for guidance and assistance in growing the company. If you currently operate an Amazon business and you're looking for that assistance and guidance to grow your company, send us a DM on Instagram and we'll talk about how we can help you grow. And if you're just getting started and looking to grow your Amazon business, we have over 500 videos here on YouTube to make sure that you get started on the right path. We'll see you in the next video.